man, I got so far into the video, and I gotta do it again because that totally doesn't make any sense. I hate that. What is happening, boot junkies? Where are my headphones? Over here. Mike Dog Audio here, back with another video on home studio setup for voiceover. And we've got two microphones in the booth today. Yes! I love it in here. I just love it in here. And I love having, I have love having microphones to test. I love it. I want to give a shout out to my man, Austin, for loaning me this microphone. Fellow booth junkie, Austin, thank you so much for loaning me this Audio Technica 4040, AT4040 microphone. I'm really having a blast using it. You'll have it back soon. <sighs> People ask me all the time. They send me email messages over email. They send me YouTube messages. They send me Facebook messages. They tweet me. They send me messages on Patreon. They send me messages all over the different places. Hey, Mike, which microphone should I get? Which microphone should I get? Okay, I'm here. I'm here to help you. Um, I've got about 300 bucks to spend on what, in which microphone. I've got it narrowed down to two. And the reason I have these two here is they, I, a lot of times I get, I get it narrowed down to two. I'm thinking about the Rode NT1 because I saw your video on it before. And I'm also thinking about the Audio-Technica uh, AT4040. Which one should I get? All I can say is yes, get one. I, I don't know. It's going to come down to what's, what, works <laughs> what works best for you. But I do want to have a comparison. Since I have the opportunity to use this microphone, I do want to offer a comparison between these two microphones that are really in, the, in that sweet spot for price. People also ask me a lot about the Rode NT1A. I have one, but I'll be honest. I, the NT1A is not for me. It's not for me. It's not, I don't like the way it sounds. I don't love the high-end response on it. I think, I think my voice doesn't sound, it doesn't flatter me. And that's just, that's just me, me and my voice. Every mic, there's microphones for your voice and there are microphones that don't suit you very well. It just so happens that the Rode NT1A doesn't suit me particularly well. I think of the choice between the NT1 and the NT1A, I like the NT1 better for those Rode microphones, my preference. But between these two, these two are, are specification-wise, they're matched very closely. Price point, they're matched very closely. Uh, to... $299? $270? $299? $270? They're like 30 bucks apart. I'll put something up on the screen. These are both like right in the... right within the 200 How much does this cost? I should know this. The Audio Technica is two ninety nine. The Rode NT one two sixty nine. Two ninety nine. Two sixty nine. But I mean, that's like two burritos at Chipotle. I mean, this is like the same for all intents and purposes. If you're going to make an investment, the difference between two sixty nine and two ninety nine really isn't that significant. Um, there you go. So, specification wise, these also are very similar microphones. So it's really going to come down to either the $30 or the subtle differences that you might hear between these two and which one that you think sounds better for you. Let's go over some of the some of the important specifications, some of the some of the biggies that you look for. There's there's lots of specifications and there are a couple of that sort of matter to us. The first one is these are both the same pattern. They're both cardioid microphones, which means they are very sensitive from the front and from about you know 90, degree, 90 degrees off to the side. And from the back, they are rather insensitive. Not silent, just insensitive. The cardioid pattern is a, is a roughly heart-shaped pattern where this tip is uh, in the microphone at the capsule itself. So there's a lobe of sensitivity that runs about 90 degrees out, maybe as much as 110 degrees out, and out on this side of the microphone. And they're much less sensitive from that side of the microphone. Just the nature, nature of the pattern of the microphone. These are both the same pattern. Cardioid. Really appropriate for, uh, for voiceover, especially if you're in a studio. They both have the same capsule size. They're one-inch capsules. Um, they both have, uh, they're both very low noise microphones. So the Rode says it's got like a 4.5 dB, dBA, I think it's DB, DBA. I've got the spec sheet down here. It's 4.5 dBA sound pressure level. Super quiet. It says incredibly quiet on the uh, on the manual. 
the AT4040, not quite as quiet. It says 12 dB, 12 dB, 12. Now this this one says dBA. This one says dB. There's there's a slight difference. dBA is a is uh, relative to the way the human ear hears. Uh, uh, with a, a man, I got so far into the video, and I gotta do it again because that totally doesn't make any sense. I hate that. So sound wise, these are both really similar microphones. This one, uh, the the Rode has a sound. Uh, it, it says a equivalent noise of four point five dBA. The the Audio Technica is a little bit different. It says twelve dB. dBA and dB are a little bit different. dBA is is a measurement that's relative to the way the human ear picks up sound, and dB is just uh, the sound. So this one is. Um, using the DBA EQ curve. It's not an unusual measurement. It's not like a, a, they're not weaseling out of anything. It's just a, a different measurement um, uh, relative to human hearing. Uh, so the, there's uh, certain parts of the, uh, the spectrum that are not we're not as sensitive to. Given the same volume, we don't hear things as loudly. Uh, DBA. Uh, but either way, these are both super quiet microphones. If I listen in my headphones and I've listened to these, I can't actually hear noise in, in any respect. I might hear my furnace, I might hear the road, but I don't hear any inherent noise in either of these microphones. So the noise floor is very, very low on both. The road does claim to be the, about the quietest in its class. So it's, it's a super incredibly, this one says extremely, uh, extremely low noise. And this one says incre <laughs> incredibly quiet. Two ways of saying the same thing. Um, the uh, the s maximum sound pressure level. So if you're going to be screaming into these microphones, or also miking instruments with it, um, the Audio Technica you can the source can be a little tiny bit louder. It's got a, a maximum uh, uh, 145 dB, 145 sound pressure level, 145 dB. Whereas uh, the same at the same um, uh, <laughs> boy for the one T NT one, it's a one 132. 132 and 145. So you can put a slightly, you can, you can, uh, mic a, uh, a 737 with this and a 747 <laughs> with this one. I don't know. You, it, it can be there. You, you can be super loud with both, but this one can tolerate a bit, a bit more volume before it clips. There is a, a slight difference in the features between these, the Rode NT1. There are no buttons, no switches, no nothing. It's just microphone. Anything that you want to do to modify the sound happens in your DAW, in your, in your hardware. Whereas, uh, the AT4040 does have two switches on it. There is a switch, um, for a high pass filter base roll off so that is over here so as i get up to the microphone i can switch it off and reduce the proximity effect so i can still get nice and close to that microphone and not have the bass come in as much whereas if i turn the switch off turn the switch off now i can hear more bass come back into my voice that's just a, a nature of the proximity effect i'll also give you a proximity um I'll get up nice and close to the NT1 so you get a sense of the proximity. Now, I can't fix this in the microphone. I have to fix it in my DAW after the fact. Sorry if it's popping. I don't have the pop filters in front of me. It does have the high pass filter. Uh, the AT4040 also does have uh, another common feature in microphones is it does have a pad, 10 dB pad. So if uh, if your source is super, super loud, you can turn that switch off, subtract 10 dBs out of the signal, and that way you get an extra, a little bit extra in the uh, maximum sound level. It can go up to 155 dB uh, with the padding gauge, so 145 to 155. You can, like, you know, monitor, you, know, you put it up right next to the sun and <laughs> hear it, 155 decibels. Man, that it would it just incredibly loud before it clips. Uh, but uh, so there you go. Two switches, no switches on this one, a couple of switches on here. It's not uncommon for a microphone. Don't think of that as being, well, that microphone sucks. It doesn't have buttons and switches on it. There are plenty of microphones that are way, way more expensive than these that don't have buttons or switches on it. It's just features that the uh, that the engineers built into it. Whether or not you want them, you might you might want them. You might want might not. Either way. Um, sound quality wise, or I should say frequency response wise, they do have different frequency response graphs. Now, interestingly, um, compared to the NT1A and the NT1, the NT1 is considered a warmer microphone. It's not quite as bright. And that's one of the things I don't like about the NT1A is it's really bright to the point of with my voice and the timbre of my voice. I do think that the NTA, NT1A sounds a bit harsh on my voice, not really flattering. Whereas the NT1 is 
that harshness is dialed back a bit, but it is a really super clear microphone and it can be, um, it can have a lot of high end clarity to it that if you're not careful, if you don't EQ it out, you, you can f maybe get, um, it, it may be not be exactly what you're looking for. Now, in my tests with the AT4040, the frequency response graph on the graph on the AT4040 does show that it has a presence boost. So up at uh, like a five to eight K up a little bit more, it does increase the treble, very common in microphones to have that presence boost. Uh, but that often can make the microphone sound too sharp. In my tests, the thing I listen to a lot in podcasts is some people have a very sharp S sound. It's super bright and whistly that if you have a super sharp S sound, I feel like it's common in, in female voices, just a, a, a nature. I, I tend to hear it more in female voices that you do to get this super sharp S sound that you, if you don't, if you don't address it, it can make the S's s s super difficult to listen to over the course of time. And I'm trying to give you enough S's so that we can hear the difference in the S's between these two microphones. And what I found in my testing, for me, in my ears, on my headphones, and in my monitors, and I've got several different pairs of headphones that I've listened on, um, I do find that even though the AT4040 does have the presence boost, I do find that that, that unpleasant S sound is even less pleasant on the NT1, which I thought was weird because the frequency response says that this one should be a little bit warmer, less bright than this one. But this one does have a certain smoothness in it, especially in that high end through whatever magic they do within these microphones, I do find that the AT4040, I think if you do note that you have that high pitched S sound, that the given a choice between these two, you might find the AT4040 more pleasant to hear yourself on. It can always be fixed in EQ later, but as means you have to fix it in EQ later. And you'd always have to create a preset for your voice that took that S sound out and I find that as I did that test in an earlier, uh, an earlier recording, I did find that the NT1 was less pleasant to my ears than the AT40. It's never a pleasant sound. You still might want to attenuate it, but I did find that the AT4040, I do find that overall, the difference between these microphones is extremely, extremely subtle. If you were to, t if I didn't show you the difference between these two, chances are you'd never be able to tell the difference between these two, especially in their, in their natural state. But if I'm going to side by side and side by side and really try and compare and contrast the difference between these, I do find that the AT4040, for, for me, I think I like the way I sound better on it, but it is the most minuscule difference between these two, between these two. There's a, there's a, just a certain je ne sais quoi that I don't know that I, that I, as I've listened to myself back and forth, could be psychological, could be, I don't know. I own this one, so I really want to want this one. <laughs> I want this one to be the winner because I, you know, I got, this is mine. But I, I do find that this AT4040 is a really nice sounding mic. Really nice sounding mic. So I'm not sure if that helps or hurts or helps you make a decision <laughs> between the two? Did I muddy the waters? Did I make it harder? Either way, I don't think you're going to go wrong spending your $300. You're not going to get a bad mic. You're not going to get a bad mic if you choose either one of these is how I feel about it. Uh, so form factor, the AT4040 is a little tiny bit smaller. They both have this really nice, they've got in, nice integrated um, Cages, uh, shock mounts, the ATs is a little bit smaller than the Rhodes. The Rode does come with a nice metal windscreen that comes with the kit. Um, really, flip a coin. Which one do you think, using my voice as a judge, is there one that you feel sounds better for me? And can you correlate that to the way it sounds for you? And if you can, maybe that helps you make a choice. I certainly hope it does. Either way, these are both really good mics. I hope you enjoy using them. I hope this helps. Now, get out there. Find yourself a large diaphragm condenser microphone. Maybe the Audio-Technica. Maybe a Rode. But get a microphone. 
get in your booth and record something. Practice, try it again, and just get out there and record something amazing. Thanks. We'll talk to you next time.